Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to try to show you all how to set up CSurf in Express and get it up and running with React in the front end. The code for this uh, tutorial is available on my GitHub so I'll put a link to these at the bottom. So um, it should be as simple as copy and pasting it uh, if you'd prefer to do that or you can uh, follow along with me as I code. And if you're unsure as to how all this has sort of come together in the back end, I have done a video tutorial on how to set up the back end with Postman, which might be a good foundation to this. Links to all of this are going to be available in the description here. Okay, so step one is to create the React app. We're going to use the uh, Create React App documentation to do this. just going to create a directory um, and then create the React app inside that directory and I'm going to call it ICSurf React App. This is going to take quite a while so I'm going to skip this bit and fast forward. Okay so now that's sorted I'm going to go inside my new um, folder that I just created with that um, command. I'm going to open my VS code bring that up here and now I can start my npm script which is going to start my react app in localhost 3000 usually. Let's open our localhost here and there you go there's the app uh, up and running. Okay now let's go inside our app.js have a look what we've got there um, I'm going to delete this information in a minute. Uh, for now let's or before I do that let's start the a new component um, which is going to contain all the information concerning the CSERV front end um, and then we can import that into the app and there you go we're rendering that so that's up and running too. Now that we've got the React app working let's populate the render with um, a couple of p tags to sort of show us what tokens and session tokens we're receiving and let's also add a, a button element so that uh, when we click it we can send a, a post request um, to the, the server. I'm going to create a, a test CSERF post click function um, which I'll define uh, in a second. I'm also going to create in these p tags um, just a little message with some empty brackets and I'll fill them in with state uh, shortly. to define the test CSERF post click function. Um, we're going to be doing a fetch request in here. Ah, it's going to need to be an async function because um, it's, well, it's an asynchronous request we're sending. Uh, the domain URL is probably going to be localhost uh, 5000, um, which is just our server. Um, the URL is going to be a string that I'm going to add on, which is in this case uh, forward slash process. I'll define domain URL in one second. The method is going to be post, and we're going to set the headers to tell our server what kind of information we're expecting to receive back. I've also included the XSRF token in the header here. And if you remember from our last video when we looked at the documentation, you can either send the token back at, through the body or through the headers. Um, or there are alternatives too. Um, I'll define the CSRF token state um, shortly. Credentials is set to include and that means we'll be able to send and receive uh, cookies. And then mobile will be caused which we'll cover in a moment. The response we've received from the server isn't going to be in a uh, format that our front end understands so we're going to need to pass that. Um, in this case we're going to pass it as text Usually in these situations, we'll do it as, you, you would do it as JSON, but as we'll see from the server, um, this is being sent as text, so we're going to need to pass it as text. And then once we've passed that data, we can then set that data as our state, um, which we can use in a moment. Now I'm going to declare the variable for domain URL. I'm going to leave that blank for now. I'm just going to check the server is localhost5000. Um, then 
we'll set up the state to hold our uh, CSRF token and the response from the post request when we get it. And that should stop these error messages and let our app function. Oh, actually, let me um, change the name of that state variable because it needs to match what's below. And now I'll pass those variables of state and put them into our render so we can see what's happening. And I'm just going to bring up the, uh, the backend server now just to check that we've got our local host running on port 5000 so I know I'm putting in the right domain URL in here. As we can see, 5000, so I'll just put that into our front end now so it knows where it's fetching from. Right, now that's set up, let's try and call our back end with a post request. Now, we know this shouldn't work because we've not yet got a CSRF token um, because we never made the get request in the first place. Let's look in our front end developer tools in our browser and as we can see we've got a cause issue. The origin has been blocked by a cause policy. So cause is something that our browsers implement um, in order to protect the servers. It's a bit confusing but I'll add some links to the bottom of this video in the description um, so you can look into it further if you need. Okay so now I'll quickly type up the get call so you remember from the first um, tutorial initially you send a get recall um, where the server sends back in the cookies a session token and in the body of the response um, a CSRF token. Um, headers are going to be the same Credentials again, we need to include because we know we want to receive a cookie and the mode is cause. And I'm going to set this up with the use effect uh, hook so that we send the get request on page reload, so it should happen automatically. And as I've saved that, you can see we've got another cause error, so now we'll go on to the next step, which is to set up cause in our server. In order to install cause, um, again, I've put the documentation link below in the description, um, we'll need to require cause and install it with npm install. After we require cause, we can then set up our cause options, which we then put into our cause middleware with app.use cause, and then the argument is the cause options we've just created. Then we can test the call. I'll just try that now. And uh, it's not being passed into the post call, so where aren't we picking this up? We should be getting it from the get request. So what I haven't done here is I haven't taken the get response and passed it and then placed that into the CSRF token state. So I'll just add that now. Objects are not valid as React child found object price. So I have at least one problem here, which is that on line 19, um, that is an asynchronous function, uh, the .json. So, they'll, so I will need a wait uh, before that. Um, so on line 20, I'm actually receiving an object, so I'll need to um, get the actual property I need from that. Okay, and now let's test, and data is being processed, great stuff, so I mean, let's just confirm that in the back end, and show you on line 32, data is being processed, there you go, that's what we're receiving, the middleware is working, the tokens are doing their job.